Okay guys, I'm here to show you a tutorial on how to bring your gauge needles back to life. Um, I have some needles here off of a first generation GS300. That's a 91 through 97 GS300 slash Aristo. I believe this also works for LS's, LS400's, ES's, and also SC300's and 400's as well too. But um, just a short snippet here. The um, small needles are at 9.9 .9 volts that I measured and the long speedometer needles are at 11 volts. Um, this example here, if you look closely, I'm using a fiber optic rod. Now, I've actually removed the innards of the needle and I left a little gap about right here which an LED will stick in, in like so and light up the whole shaft to illuminate the LED from the other side giving it that stock reddish color I guess because that's the color of the plastic and um, doesn't take too much to do so I bought these, this uh, fiber optic uh, rod here 5 feet 3 millimeters off of eBay for approximately nine bucks. Uh, the LED is also in there too that came with the package. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use smaller ones. But um, this is fairly simple, really easy to get you up and running. Really cheap. Okay, that's that option. Oh, and uh, by the way, I have three millimeter. Three millimeter fits, and it kind of widens the plastic a little bit. If you can find a two millimeter or one mil one millimeter, you'll be golden. Anything smaller than three. Would be awesome. Three, if it's a, if it's your last resort, go for it. So that's the first easy option to bring your gauge needles back to life. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the more um, uh, difficult manner, but I like the results because it's much brighter. So I'll do that in a second. Kind of backtracking, but one thing I forgot to mention is on both the simple method and the difficult method, you want to use uh, resistors. For the simple method, depending on the type of LED you choose, it could be anywhere from a 400 ohm to a 600 ohm resistor. Uh, for the SMD LEDs, for the short LED needle, I think I used about 36 of those LEDs. And my resistor I used, I want to say, was like a 15 or 18 ohm. This is a 1 8 watt resistor, really small one, so it doesn't weigh down your needle and the needle becomes inaccurate as far as reading you know speedometer or or your fuel that's left in your fuel tank okay guys i hope you can see this um one thing that i wanted to show you this is the more difficult method on how to do your led gauges um here's a series of things that i have here that you will need you'll need solder soldering iron i have a wireless one here or cordless one here a toothpick needle nose pliers to mount the uh, SMD LEDs in, some flux, and some really thin wire along with your SMD LEDs. Okay, so what I've done now is taking the wire and cut out two equal segments, like so, I'm using my scissors here. And what I'm gonna do is turn on the burner and burn off the blue outer plastic uh, I guess sheath on the copper wire and just leave a bare wire. One thing I forgot to mention is you also want a piece of sandpaper to kind of roughen, off, roughen up and take off the black tarnish from the wire after it's been put in, on the burner. Okay, so I got my uh, burner on here and I'm trying to get close enough without actually getting the camera burned. But if you see there, you can kind of see me putting the wire in here it's kind of getting red hot too as well I'm taking off the uh, blue plastic I guess shielding or sheath oh crap okay I have a finished product here what kind of happened is I went too far into the flame and a portion of the wire uh, melted and fell so this one is done and I'll sand it down later I'm gonna start on the second one here if I can grip it doing this left-handed so bear with me that's my wire and just repeat the process it's little by little you know kind of running it through making sure that uh, it burns off the plastic and you have just the bare blackened copper wire All right. okay so I don't know if you can see it here but 
I have my wire. There's a little hint of uh, what's left of the blue plastic, but most of it has been burned off. And I'm about to use my sandpaper piece here to sand and scruff it off. Go. Okay, so what I have here is the wire and I have the sandpaper. Take it and put your finger over it and kind of just brush it through like so as you rotate the wire around. It'll leave the nice copper finish when you're done. You're stripping off all that uh, plastic surrounding and plastic coating that we kind of burned off. So now it's nice and shiny and copper colored. Okay, so basically I have my copper wires here. I have all the blue uh, coloring removed from them. Now they're just bare copper. And I have my toothpick here. What I'm going to do is, each one of these SMD LEDs, they're made by Osram slash Philips. I'm going to put a dab of the toothpick on my tongue and pick them up with the toothpick and line them up face down starting here down my needle nose pliers yes. and line them up. Once once I do that I'll show you mm. afterwards in a second. Okay what we have here is one SMD LED. Um, this is the back side. I don't know if you have enough light to be able to see it there. So what I'm going to actually do here is pick it up and show you the front side. Now these all need to be orientated in a particular fashion. Uh, let's see here. If you look at the left side of your screen, you can barely see it, there's a green little dot. All of those dots should line up with every LED that you lay down on the needle nose pliers. One side is the anode, one side is cathode, positive and negative. Um, right now I don't remember, but I know on digikey.com when you order it, they have the um, data sheet for every part which indicates which side is positive and which side is negative. So give me a second and I'll line these up for you. Okay, so I have one placed in here already. With my particular arrangement, uh, the green is actually on the left side. The green dot or the green line uh, is on the left side. So I'm going to follow suit with every one of these LEDs. So here we go. I just dabbed the toothpick on my tongue. Turned it over. Okay, the green is on that side. Oop, there it is. It's on the toothpick. Sorry, I'm doing this left-handed. Recording left-handed. So I'm going to turn it over and try and line it up. Uh-oh. i got to try again. Try and line this up. Ah, cripes. Give me a second. I'll line it up, then I'll show you the after effect. Okay. I got all four of them that I had left lined up there. Let me try and get this in focus. If you see them there, now, uh, where's the toothpick? What's easiest is if you dab it on your tongue and you pick them up lengthwise, like so, and try and line them up while using your other finger, other hand, or other fingers to keep it in the grooves. Once you have it in, pretty much the needle nose pliers, hold them in place. Then you can come through here and use your flux, which is what your um, solder is going to adhere to and kind of dab a little bit on each one of the metal terminals on one side at a time. Do it little by little, one LED at a time. You're going to try and keep your wire as straight as possible and lay it down in a straight line when you do this. Once you do one side, repeat the process with the other, add the flux, straighten out the wire as straight as possible and lay it on top of the flux. The flux will hold it in place. It will hold it in place. And then that's when you follow through with the solder and it'll just stick to it. Um, you'll get to a point where maybe at about, let's say about right here, maybe 10 of them or so, maybe 15, uh, the needle nose pliers are opening up much more at the top so they won't be held in place. When that happens, do it maybe eight at a time and kind of roll, I guess, pull them down and roll them up and continue with the, the rest of the wire strands 
on top of the uh, new ones you place in in line. I don't have enough to show this, but I hope um, me talking about it will convey it to you. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask or post. All right, give me a second here and I'll continue. Okay, so now I've kind of put the flux just on one side. I used a, a second toothpick kind of to uh, straighten and uh, straighten it out and get it in a straight line on the metal contacts on the right side of these LED SMD LEDs. So now I'm going to take this copper wire and lay it in a straight line on that side. After that, I will follow with the solder and hopefully this is hot enough. If not, I'll, I'll pick out my wired soldering iron. Now I've laid down the copper wire here on the uh, flux and the LEDs and I'm about to solder it in place. Alright, so bear with me. Okay, well the portable one wasn't cutting it, so uh, portable soldering iron, so I had to resort to my good old-fashioned wired soldering iron. $9.99, made in China, off eBay. No, off Amazon, excuse me. I think it's 30 watt or so. So I'm going to give that a shot. Well, let's see here, I'm trying to do this one-handed. Okay. I don't know if you can make out what's going on here. There we go, that's even better. Okay. So let's give this a shot. I do it in this fashion to try and get it. Actually, put it on the soldering iron, which is not your proper soldering, but it's much easier in this fashion. So I'm going to hold this down for a brief moment. You guys are going to have to see the after effects. Okay, let's try that again. Let's see. Let's set this down like so. Okay. Let's try and see if we can get this without uh, screwing up this time. As I said, this is not the uh, most easiest method. But uh took me a while, <laughs> to be honest, it took me a day or two to get all four needles. But I was happy with the results. Very happy. Okay, so let's try and get this from the other side. Fingers crossed that it goes straight this time. Okay, got that one. Got two, got three, and four, yes. We have success. So, if we look there, it doesn't look pretty. I'm going to have to try and straighten it out and line it up, but once you get them, um, the wire on each end, you know, add your resistor. It would help if you have a power supply. Maybe set it at something like six volts. And, um, a resistance of maybe 300 to start, 400 and work your way down. You know, I would probably stop, if you have 36 of these in line, I'd probably stop at maybe 200 in the testing phase, 200 ohms, and then go from there. Okay, I have the other copper wire in place on the left side, right here. If you see, so now I'm going to set the camera down 
and try and uh, get some good footage for you guys. Maybe use this to lift it up a bit. Oh no, bad idea, bad idea, bad idea. Okay, let's push that back down. All right, straighten this up so the so that the wires do not make contact. Ah, wrong hand, left hand. Ugh. All right. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. Okay, let's try again. We have the left copper wire in place. So now, let's try the soldering. Ugh, okay. Actually holding the wire with my hand now. Uh, I've got one side in. Let me fix that though, because it's not how I like it. Could be better. Could be much better. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's see how this turns out. Maybe I'll just deal with it. The uh, wire is actually soldered to the solder, but it's running down the side of the of the uh, LEDs there we go let's try again get it on the top oh gosh all right I'll just manage as long as it makes uh, electrical contact that will work and the last one at the top come on there we go so now we have both wires soldered in place. I'm just waiting to get in focus. There we go. You will do this, like I said, for the small needle would be about 36 LEDs for the long needle. <laughs> probably about 58 or so. 56. Um, and you'll do it segment by segment. So if it were me, I would probably continue up till about right here. Considering how the needle nose pliers have spread apart, I'd lift it up and slide these eight or ten I just did down here and roll them up and start again with another eight or ten. <coughs> Excuse me. And progress that way. <coughs> Excuse me. It's okay if um not every individual I try and have as many of them light up as possible. If one or two or three don't light up, the intensity of the SMD LEDs are bright enough so that it won't really uh, make a noticeable difference. If you have a batch of two, three, or four all in the same line that do not light up, you'll notice that more than likely. All right, I hope this helps. Um, afterwards, when I did do my uh, 36 SMD LEDs and 58 SMD LEDs, like I said, I believe I used an 18 ohm resistor. It was 1 8 watt. I'll double check and verify and get back to you on that. So yes, the resistor used in this was a 15 ohm 1 8 watt resistor. It's really tiny. I just verified that. And if you want, uh, give me one second here. This, if it focuses in is what it looked like when I was working on my long needle to give you an idea All right. this is a clublexus.com where the picture is posted and uh, I don't know if it can show in the video but the let's see here the the speedometer or I'm sorry the RPM gauge and the fuel gauge are the only two that have been changed with the method I'm describing in this picture. The uh, 
the temperature gauge I think is still factory and speedometer is not even on all right just to give you an idea of the intensity the the LEDs in the back as far as the numbers uh, go the uh, speed and also RPMs are T5 tri-chip high output SMD LEDs I think the uh, seller is JTEC on eBay uh, to give you an idea all right on clublexus.com the post is called issues with LT someone please help anybody in the net that wants to type that in Google it will lead you to here hope this helps